Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about Laserdisc, and in particular, what is Laserdisc and why would someone still collect something like Laserdisc? Now, Laserdisc was, I believe, released in the 70s or early 80s. It was alongside VHS and Betamax, so it was in that era of releases. Now, it's got somewhat of a cult collector status in collector communities due to the large artwork that the covers come with. It's got the same footprint as vinyl, essentially. And obviously something like Scream, look at that beautiful artwork. I mean, having this on a shelf or displayed, even like, even just as like an experience. Obviously pull it out and make a bit of noise. That's what a laser disc actually looks like. That is the footprint of a laser disc. I know a lot of people say don't leave it in the plastic, it ruins the disc. Obviously a lot of these get oxidized with the air hitting them. But I try to look after mine. Like this is a really good condition laser disc for Scream, the original Scream. And this is also the only way you can experience Wes Craven's original vision for Scream. Because they have not put out the true director's cut since laser disc. Even if they say it's the director's cut, this is the only way you can watch Wes Craven's original vision, the way he intended it to be seen. So that's one reason to collect something like Laserdisc. Obviously different versions of the movie. Something like Scream, obviously Wes Craven signed off on this version. And other than this version, I don't believe his um, vision of Scream was ever released outside of this. Um, but that's one reason to collect this. As we're on additions, I'm just going to put that down there. I'll, I'll move on to these ones soon. I'll move on to the Abyss and that soon. But I just want to talk about Star Wars. Because Star Wars has a huge collector market in the Laserdisc scene. This is a behemoth of a pack. Now, obviously, there's Japanese releases that Laserdisc collectors will be going crazy for. These are obviously the 1993 version of Star Wars. And obviously, if I don't want to watch the 4K that has um, alterations and Han, sh Han Solo shooting first and so on and so on... If I don't want to watch A New Hope, I mean, this is, still has A New Hope in here, but if I don't want all the pre- or post-1997 changes, Laserdisc is probably the way to go, or the limited edition 2006 releases that were a transfer from the Laserdisc that reinserted the original crawl into A New Hope, or what would be called A New Hope after that point. Now, obviously it's not for everyone. This is a very heavy set. This probably weighs about a couple of kilos. I don't know if it has a weight on it, but it's very heavy. And what do you actually get in Star Wars? Let's have a look. Let's have a quick look. There's a lot of discs in this. There's probably, um, there is 18 sides to these. So there's probably six, if it's a six sides on that, there'll be three in number one in, uh, what you would call a new hope. Uh, 7 to 12, so it's about 3 discs per movie. You'd have to switch it over and flip it. But these are called CAVs, so they are a higher format designed not to lose quality. So this is probably the best quality outside. I mean, some people may even argue that this is better than the 2006 limited editions, which it would be because it was a transfer from this release. But yeah, Star Wars is a big release. Let's, let's take out a disc. We'll have a look. I'm just going to move the microphone, so if it booms for a second, there we go. Let's have a quick look at one of the discs, Star Wars, on Laserdisc. Obviously there's a few fingerprints on it, but there is number one, 1977. Or what you would call a new hope. Obviously it comes in multiple sort of packets. Let's pull out one. Let's, let's have a look at number one. It's a cav. So a cav means it's a higher quality. I'm just going to grab it out. And look at that, that is one, one side of Star Wars, the other side of Star Wars, and there are obviously more releases. Look at that nice reflection on me. <laughs> but yeah, one reason to collect something like this is it's just a collector's item. And also, if you don't have a Laserdisc player, you're not probably going to be watching this. I have a Laserdisc player. But, you know, something like this is an experience. I mean, it's not often that you get an experience. Vinyl is obviously back and in full effect now. Obviously vinyl, people have went back towards that format. And this is a movie representation, a movie physical format that has the same footprint and same kind of layout in the covers to vinyl. And the weight is definitely equivalent to vinyl. And let's just bring the microphone closer. 
But, you know, something like this is a true collector's item. And obviously not everyone has this anymore. Like, this is something that collectors will have it. But, you know, it's heavy. Most people don't have a laser disc player. I mean, they don't really know what it is. I mean, there's a lot of people who haven't even heard of laser disc, let alone held one in their hands. But to hold it is kind of an experience. And looking at something like The Abyss, this had a DVD release that was comparable to the LaserDisc. I mean, obviously this is a special edition. Look at this compared to what you'd get with a DVD. Before I was so rudely interrupted by my alarm, I was going to show you The Abyss. So obviously you have a collector's experience. You get a little booklet in this one, The Abyss. Um, you have the discs just sitting on the open. And then I think that's it for that. But, you know, look at these. There are three discs in this, so six sides, am I correct? Yeah, six sides, so you get the special features as well. And this will tell you what you get on each side, so you get everything on there. You know, it is a real experience to collect something like this. And obviously that was not released on Blu-ray, 4K, until, like, I think it's coming out next week on 4K. So The Abyss and True Lies were not released on newer formats. Not even streaming. You couldn't even stream these things. Let's put these back where they are. You couldn't even stream these things. Just hold them there. I'm trying to get my thumbnail. Let's move that out of the way. We'll get the thumbnail, guys. But... There, we got it. But, yeah, these things were not released. Look look at the cover of this. Look at this is another reason to collect laser disc. Look how beautiful that artwork is. It opens up. It's like a vinyl, you have all your text there. You open up the other side. Bang. It's like really good. Equivalent to vinyl sort of experience. And something like this is really like top tier in this day and age. Let's pull this a bit closer because I don't think like you can hear me. Something like this is a top tier experience. Like you don't get this experience too often anymore. Like Something that's equivalent to vinyl as a physical format, like even if you choose not to watch this, like if you don't have the player, having this on a wall or on a display, like everyone is going to ask, oh, what's that? That's awesome. Like, and you say, oh, do you want to watch it? If you have the player, like you're, you're going to be the life of the party if you're a collector and you have collector friends. Now, another reason that some people go towards uh, Laserdisc is because stuff like uh, Jurassic Park. Now, this is not the version that everyone goes crazy about. This is just a standard edition THX soundtrack. There's one called DTX soundtrack, which is the true sound mix for Jurassic Park. The only way you can hear the true classic original sound mix for Jurassic Park is Laserdisc. It was not put out on any newer formats. I think DVD may have tried to do TTS, but... um. Yeah, the way to watch it is Laserdisc. Look at this experience too. Like, if you open up the covers, let's look at this experience. Look at that. That is art. And you obviously, your, your discs are housed in there. So obviously, you know, it's an experience. And it's not for everyone. But the version that people go crazy for for Jurassic Park is the DTS. Because the sound mix on the DTS for Jurassic Park beats everything like it is so good and so perfect so pristine that it beats even the 4k releases and i don't think they've ever put out the dts on any newer formats so i think they tried it with dvd but seriously the way to watch it is through laserdisc so why am i talking about laserdisc why am i trying to say what it is because so often so pe so many people haven't even heard of laserdisc they know about vhs obviously some people will have heard of our beta max or beta cam, but a lot of people haven't heard about Laserdisc. And you know, something like Wes Craven's definitive version for Scream, that is housed on Laserdisc. You cannot get this on any other format. I mean, obviously you can host the Jolly Roger and find anything you want, I guess, but like if you want to get it legally, that's the way you get it. Legal copy, housed on your shelf, official copy. That's the way to get it. And it's not for everyone, I get it. They are big, massive things. But, you know, people are getting back into vinyl now and have all the housing for vinyls. 
So this is probably the best time to start a laser disc collection if you wanted one. Like, the players are a bit expensive, I'll admit that. I have one that came with all my laser di a lot of the laser discs I bought. It came as part of a deal on, my, on eBay. And it works. It doesn't have the remote though, but it works. Like, if I want to watch a laser disc, I can pop it in and it'll work. I might even show you the process of how I put a laser disc in the player. But we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Right now, laser disc is the weird format. It's like it was the high quality format in the 90s that you'd pick over VHS or I think by then beta would have lost. But it was what you'd pick before DVD to compete with VHS at a higher quality. And it is still it still holds up. Like I watch these sometimes, like I watched um Get Shorty the other week. And it still holds up really well. Like, you wouldn't know you're watching a laser disc. The quality, obviously, if you're... You have to have reservations. You're not watching a 4K Blu-ray with... If you turn sharpening all, up all the way, it's going to look like poo, you know? But if you if you look after it and have it in its projected format, so if it was 480i or 480, 480p in America, or 576 in Australia, if you have it at standard definition, it's going to look great on a TV. Like... It, Especially if you have a CRT or something, it's going to look beautiful on that TV. If you try to put it on a 4K TV, it's obviously you have to have some reservations about what you're going to get. But the fact that you're watching a format that large that's on a player and you're watching it, it's just kind of a feat of like technology and how far we've come. We've went from... Let's try to get this without everything falling over. We've went from something like this. Let's pull it out. I'm going to have a look. We went from something like this to something like let's let's just get something off the shelf here. What's open? I don't want to open anything. Let's just get Electra off the shelf. Electra is a great movie as well. Let's get that off the shelf. We have went from something like this in the '90s to something like this now, and even you know streaming now. You don't even have to have this anymore. But we went from a format this large to a format this large. Optical media. This is analog though, so this is another reason. Analog, obviously, if it has a scratch on it, you're not going to lose the whole video. It's not going to glitch out. It's not going to stop. Obviously, it might glitch out if you damage it too badly. But, you know, let's put Electra back where she belongs. Thanks, Electra, for the assist. And, you know, something like this, as long as you look after it, it'll look, it'll play still like... Obviously, oxidization gets to wet it with the air, and some of these have disc rot or are susceptible, susceptible, susceptible. I can't talk today. Susceptible to disc rot. That's what I get for talking too fast. Um, but it's amazing that we've went from something that big to a little disc like that, and even digital now. I mean, you don't even need the disc anymore. But you know, I still prefer my discs. I still prefer this behind me. I still prefer to have the physical. What is it? The physical interaction with my movies grabbing it off the shelf and let's say i want to watch uh working fright great australian movie great australian movie let's say i want to watch this i don't have to worry about where it is what it's streaming on how much it costs on itunes what it, any of that stuff it's on my shelf ready to go it's a higher upfront cost obviously you're buying the movie to house on a shelf but you know this is something i'm going to watch over and over again. It's something I'm going to pull off my shelf and watch repeatedly. So to have it there at a second's notice without even thinking about it, it's just part of the experience for me. I love to have that accessibility for my movies. And obviously Laserdisc is a bit more of a consideration, obviously as it's going to fall over here because it's too big. Held it right there, bang. Something like True Lies, for example. Let's get True Lies out. Something like True Lies wasn't even available on... Something like True Lies wasn't even available on uh, newer formats. And DVD it's available on, obviously. But, I mean, you know, until, like, this coming week, because we're in March now, the the DVD 4K... The 4K Blu-ray release hasn't happened yet. But it is on in the pipeline for this month. But this was not even on streaming for many, many years. And that is just not good enough. Like... I know Cameron gets kind of a bad rap these days. I mean, he gets a good rap as well. Don't get me wrong. He gets a really good rap for Avatar and everything. But he gets a bad rap in preservation stance because of what he did to Terminator 2 and him just kind of not caring about his back catalogue. I mean, he's, he's done right with Titanic, though. The 4K of Titanic looks beautiful. 
But, you know, experience of movies should not be torn down from a director's new vision. That's what made a lot of people angry with George Lucas. And so many directors have repeated that. Spielberg obviously tried to change E.T. at one point. There was a South Park episode about it, as there is with everything. But it should you should preserve art in the original way it was shown. And that's how I feel about it. I feel like these movies, even on Laserdisc, I can enjoy them just as much as I can a 4K or Blu-ray or whatever. As long as the experience I cater it to suit that format, it'll look great. I will enjoy it. I'll be into the movie. Movie is an experience, and that's how it should be experienced. It shouldn't be something that is overcomplicated. It should just be a set and forget sort of mentality. Put it in the player, ready to go. Or if you're streaming, if you're into streaming, there's no problem with that either. I'm not one of those collectors who has to poo on streaming all the time and say, streaming is bad, streaming is not good. Streaming is great. It's made everything more accessible. But in making everything more accessible, it's made things worse for exploring because the algorithm will recommend what the license is coming up for or whatever they want you watching. The algorithm will tell you what they want you to watch rather than you saying, oh, I like the cover of... I like this cover, One Hour Photo. Great Robin Williams movie. I love the cover of this. Look at that cover. Let's see if I can get it without reflecting it. It's not open yet because I haven't watched the Blu-ray copy. I, I Last time I experienced this was on DVD. You're not going to be able to see that cover, but it's a really good... Um, oh, I think you can see it a bit better there. But, you know, the cover alone for that, it gets a bit of intrigue and it's like, oh, Robert, that's Robin Williams. Hold on. This is a... Uh, he's in red. What? This looks a bit ominous. I want to... I want to watch this movie. You know, that's the whole mentality of having a physical copy. And yes, they can do things with the posters on these streaming services. Don't get me wrong. But it's not the same, you know. That is an experience that ca catches your eye. And if you knew nothing about that movie and you weren't look going out of your way to look for it and you saw that on a shelf, it would grab you. It would be like, this is what I want to watch. Like, that looks interesting. And it's also cheaper to get into this community as well at the moment because obviously if you're not collecting 4K like I am, like Blu-ray is going out for really cheap these days as long as you're not buying brand new. If you're buying on the secondary market, like a CEX or something, you'd be able to pick up these for a few dollars, like not even in Australia. Like you could get them for a few dollars. I'm sure overseas you can get it for a few cents or pennies or whatever you use overseas, um, UK pound, you know. You could get these for a few quid or whatever you call them overseas. I'm trying to... Guess what you call the money overseas? But, you know, something like Samson and Delilah, this would definitely be on Stan, for sure, on our streaming servers in Australia, Stan. But the fact that I don't I don't have to get a Stan subscription, I don't need to pay $20 and on the chance that I just want to watch one movie. Because this is how I watch movies. I would probably just come in, choose one I want to watch, and I'll never watch that streaming service again. The fact that it's on my shelf and I don't have to think about a streaming service, or even paying $20 or setting up my billing information on these services or whatever. I can just watch this off my shelf, don't have to think about it. And that's part of the experience I like. It's part of the reason I like Laserdisc, because it's another experience. It's like opening up, looking at the artwork. You get to look at Arnie with his big um, gun and, yeah, with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Like, obviously, look at that. That is, that's art. And we've lost the sensation of the artwork and the experience of opening up and watching a movie in pursuit of instant gratification. And I think that's kind of wrong. Anyways, I feel like this is a bit of a rant now. You've learned a bit more about Laserdisc. It was the high quality format that competed with VHS. We went off on a bit of a rant about everything as we often do on this thing. But yeah, if you like what you heard and wanna support the channel, maybe subscribe, chuck a like, comment. Let's talk about Laserdisc. If you're a collector, um, if you're a Blu-ray collector, talk about your collection. I want to hear all you guys' stories. When I joined this community on YouTube, I wanted to join you guys and connect with you guys. So me sharing my collection is like me trying to connect to you guys. So it, I appreciate every view I get at this point. Like even if it's 10 views, I don't care if it's 10 views. I'm not here for the money. I'm here because I love the community and I want to be a part of it. And obviously guys like Films at, films at Home, like Jeff, he's doing great stuff in the film community. Um, there's a few guys, I don't want to mention them all, but... There are a lot of guys, um, what's the other guy's name? I forget his name. He's He's got a collection like this, but he saw all his uh, collection a while back. I forgot what his name was because he's kind of fallen off the map. But I follow all of these YouTube channels and watch what everyone's doing because obviously I'm a collector and I love the physical sensation of going out and collecting physical media. 
because people and crazy people like me are going to keep this stuff alive. People thought, everyone thought people were crazy going back to vinyl. And now look at vinyl, it's come back. So don't doubt what you're not a fan of. I mean, people are a fan of this stuff. And people will support this stuff. I mean, I'm not knocking vinyl. Like vinyl, I definitely understand the appeal of vinyl. And I think vinyl has made a resurgence hugely. If that can do it, if vinyl, a dead format that lost CD 20 odd years ago, can come back and dominate the market, what does that say about physical media? I mean, I don't think Laserdisc is going to make a return, but, you know, Blu-ray is not dead. It's become more niche, and I think we need to address it what it is. Anyways, guys, that is all for now. If you like what you heard and you want to support the channel, subscribe, drop a comment, like it, whatever you want to do. Share it, don't share it, doesn't matter. We're here for the fun of it. We're here to talk about movies. And thanks for giving me a bit of your time and listening to me if you've stayed this long. So until next time, peace out, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.